In this task, we will perform a supervised classification. There are two steps in performing a supervised classification, training and classification. In the training step, a training data set is created that classifies sample portions of the Im input imagery. This training data set will then be passed to step two, where it will be used when determining how to classify the image. You can think of it as the user showing the computer a few examples of how you would like to have the image classified and then letting the computer rely on your examples to classify the rest of the image based on what it learned from you. For the first step, training, we will create a new vector map and digitize a few sample areas of the image and set the classes we wish to have similar areas classified as when the computer performs a supervised classification. Next, we will convert the vector map to a raster map, which will then be passed to step two for use in the actual classification. So let's perform the training step now. So we're going to click Vector, Develop Vector Map, Create New Vector Map. This will open the Create New Vector Map dialog. And we're going to set the following options. For the name, we're going to set Training. Create attribute table should be checked, and key column will be category. Add created map into layer tree should be checked. Click OK to create the training vector map and add it to the layer tree. In the layer tree, so I'm going to go over here and click map layers. Right click on the training vector map and choose show attribute data from the contextual menu. This will open the GRASGIS Attribute Table Manager window, which allows for display, query, and modification of the Vector Maps Attribute Table. Click Manage Tables tab. This tab allows us to create, remove, and rename Attribute Table columns. We will create a new column to store the description of the categories that we will assign to our training data set. In the Add Columns section, Um, <clears throat> we're going to create a new column with the following properties. So the column is going to be DESCR, which stands for description. The type is going to be var car, so the variable characters. And the length will be 10. I'm going to click the Add button to create the column. The new column will appear in the table list. So you can see it here. If you make a mistake, you can right click on the column and choose Drop a selected column to delete it from the table. Click the quit button to close the table manager. Now that we have the vector map created, we need to display the raster map that we wish to digitize our training areas from. Instead of creating a new raster composite, we will create a new temporary RGB display raster. In the layer manager, click add various raster maps button, then select add RGB map layer from the contextual menu. This will open the d.rgbs tool and the d stands for display. We're going to set the following parameters. For red, choose 4. For green, choose 5. And for blue, choose 3. Click OK button to create the RGB temporary raster overlay and add it to the map layers list. If it doesn't immediately show, um, uh, well, first a note, the training at classification vector map may be hidden behind the RGB raster overlay in the map layers list. So for instance, you're seeing that here. If this happens, simply click on a different tab in the layer manager window, then click back to map layers. There we go. And we can all, uh, I'm also gonna drag the training at classification map above the uh, raster overlay. There we go. All right, so now let's right click and click zoom to selected maps so that we can see the RGB composite that we created. Perfect. So now <clears throat> we are set to create our training data set. In our training data set, we will create five training records for five classes. So the classes are going to be agriculture water, grass, forest, and urban. We will then evaluate the spectral signatures and then add additional spectral signatures. 
So in the map layers list, I'm going to right click on training at classification and choose start editing. This will enable and display the digitizer toolbar in the map display window. <clears throat> so that's this toolbar right here. We'll use this toolbar to create new training areas and set the category and description attributes to the appropriate values. So let's zoom in to uh, this field here using the zoom tool. There we go. And I'm going to click the digitize new area button. This is going to select that tool. <clears throat> now in general, the tools on the digitizer toolbar perform actions with a left click undo actions with a control click and confirm or complete actions with a right click. Therefore, to create an area with four vertices, we would left click five times to place the four vertices in the fifth vertex at the same location as the vertex, the first vertex to close the area. So that's uh, four clicks for the four vertices and then the fifth click uh, so that the last vertex is the same as the first vertex. Uh, then we will right click to complete the area. So we will left click four times to create the four vertices for the area. And it's going to be inside this field here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to left click a fifth time on top of the first vertex to close the area. And now I'm going to right click to complete the area. When the area is created, the Define Attributes uh, dialog will appear. In the Define Attributes dialog, set the Description Attribute value to AG1. So AG1. Click the Submit button. This will save the attribute and close the window. If the window did not close, click Cancel. So we're going to create four more training areas using um, <clears throat> uh, what you see here as a guide. And I'm going to set the descriptions of these training areas to Water 1, Grass 1, Forest 1, and Urban 1, respectively. And so let me zoom to full extent here. Oops. Uh, not that full extent. Let me zoom back here. Okay, I'll just zoom out. Yeah. And out again. Out again. Okay. And so next I want to choose Water. So I'm going to choose this patch of water right here. I'm going to digitize a new area. Again, clicking four times and then right clicking. And I call this one water one. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to uh, zoom back a few times here. And now I'm going to zoom to this area create a new digitized area and then right click to complete it and this is going to be grass one oops okay you can zoom back out I'm going to zoom over here to the uh, uh, curve in the river again create a new digitized area When the last and the first vertex match, I will then right click and this will be forest one. Click submit. Zoom back out again. And now we're going to do the urban area. And so we'll zoom in, say, here. And create a new area. And that'll be this box here. And right click to complete, and we're going to call this one Urban One and click Submit. So now that we've completed digitizing all five training areas, I'm going to click Quick, Di Quick Quit Digitizer button, and I'm going to click Yes to save my changes dialog. So the digitized areas will now be displayed in a bland gray color. So I may need to. Uh, refresh here or maybe uh, there we go there we go you can see that bland color so let me zoom, zoom out Oop. 
Looks like I have a region issue. So let's set the region real quick. So region, set region. And let's set that from our TMSAC sub 1. Click close. I'm going to refresh again. There we go. So now we're seeing everything is that bland gray. So let me uh, zoom to my full extent here of my RGB composite. There we go. So now you can see the bland gray. So what happened is I hadn't set my region yet and so wasn't quite sure uh, what it wanted me to display. Okay, so now that the vector map training is complete, uh, the next step is to convert it to a raster map so it can be used for input into the first pass, which is i.gensig of the supervised classification process. So I'm going to click vector, map type conversion, vector to raster. This will open the v.2.rast tool. I want to set the following required parameters. The name of the input vector map is going to be training at classification. The name for the output raster map will be training areas. And the source of the raster values will be ATTR, which means the attribute table. So now we're going to click on the attribute tabs. And the name of the column for the ATTR parameter is going to be category. And the name of the column for the category labels will be DESCR or description. Make sure add created maps in the layer tree is checked and click the run button. Make sure there are no errors. There aren't, so I'm going to click close. And the training area raster will be added to the map layers list and displayed in the map display. So you can see that um, here. Let me drag it up above. So now you can see I have the different uh, colored rasters. So the training area raster map is displaying mostly as white and is obscuring our view of the underlying imagery. So we're going to set the white cells transparent so we can see where the training areas lay on top of the uh, RGB composite. So I'm going to right click on training areas in the map layers list and I'm going to choose properties. There we go. Click Null Cells tab, check Overlay, non-null values only, and then click OK button. This will apply it and close. And now the Null Cells will be transparent and the two raster maps will be displayed together. Now before we move to the second step of the classification, let's verify that the training area raster map is the correct cell values and labels. So in the map display, click Query Raster Vector Maps and then click on one of the training areas. This will display its attributes. When you do this, the Layer Manager, the Command Console tab will activate and the results of the query tool will display. So what we need to do is, spe is specify uh, or is to make sure that everything is specified correctly. But notice here that I have one AG1. Well, that's not exactly what I was expecting. The reason being is that it is that we are, uh, have the training areas selected in our map layers list. So I need to go back and make sure the training areas is selected, <clears throat> and it is, and then select another one. There we go. We have a grass one. So I guess I did actually name that ag one. I apologize. We have water one, we have urban one, and we have forest one. So you can see that they all have the correct description and they all have the correct classification name.